Hi, this is Pat with Pat's Two Cents. God wants us to be mindful of some things. And one of those things is how we deal with stuff, how we deal with problems, how we deal with challenges, how we deal with personal attacks on our character, personal attacks, verbal attacks, false accusations, rejection. How do we deal with that? And why is that happening to God's people? And we're going to see a little bit of that right here. You know, when I think about it, some people have even lost their jobs. God's people. And it's because they made a stand. And that's why so many are afraid to make a stand because they are afraid of the consequences, which means they fear man more than they fear God. All right, so let's go to, and I'm not criticizing that because that comes from developing a close relationship with God, reading his word, prayer, experiencing him. And sometimes it takes all that over a course of time to get to the point where we have more faith in God than we do in man. All right, so here we go. <clears throat> Let's go to 1 Peter chapter 4. We're going to start reading it verse 1. Why not? All right. And let me make sure we are recording. Yes, we are. All right. For as much then as Christ has suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves likewise with the same mind, that he that has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin, that he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh to the lust of men, but to the will of God. For the time past of our life may suffice us to have wrought the will of the Gentiles. When we walked in lasciviousness, lust, excess of wine, revelings, banquetings, and abominable idolatries, wherein they think it strange that ye run not with them to the same excess of riot, speaking evil of you. Now, some of you may find, this Pat's two cents right in here, some of you may find that the people that used to be close to you, the people that used to be your, your running buddies, your homeboys, your sidekicks are scarce. They're few and hard to find. And you wonder, well, what happened? Did you do something to make a man? Well, here it is right here. They are going the same way they've been going. But you have steered your direction in the direction of the light and the ways of God. So now your ways, your values, your lifestyle, everything about you and them, you are diametrically opposed to them. So the Bible says, how can two walk together lest they be agreed? And you will find that if you're not in agreement with their sin and they're not in agreement with your righteousness, that right there in and of itself will automatically demolish and disintegrate friendships. So don't let your feelings be hurt when you find people backing out of your life. Don't let your feelings be damaged. Don't shed a tear and think something's wrong with you because people don't want to hang with you like they used to. I remember years ago, my sister and I were extremely close. We could talk for four or five hours. We could solve all the world's problems. <laughs> but let me tell you, once I gave my heart to the Lord, that right there started to deteriorate and disintegrate. And there would be times when we would be in the house and she get ready to tell a good old juicy joke. I don't know what it was. I'm just saying good old juicy joke because she was all excited about it. And then she'd say, oh, crap, I can't tell you that joke. I, you're not any fun anymore. I can't tell you those good old dirty jokes now that you, you know, have gone the Christian route. <clears throat> so there are a lot of people that will think of you, that will treat you or react to you 
as nothing more than a kill joy because they can't do the same excess they used to when you were on the same, on one accord, so to speak. But now that you are on opposite sides of the spectrum, they feel uncomfortable around you. Uh, Kathy and I were just talking a few minutes ago. That just popped in my head. So I'm going to use that as an example about when you live next to or above someone that has a bunch of roaches. And you notice if you're in their house and you turn the light on, the roaches are on the floor, but they scat. As soon as the light goes on, they scatter and hide. Well, that's what your friends do with you because you are now shedding light everywhere you go. The light of God, the light of righteousness, the light of truth, the light of integrity, character, wholesomeness, all of that. Roaches don't want to be around light. No more than your sin-ridden friends want to be around your light. They don't want to be around you. You remind them of what they're not doing correctly. You remind them of where they have fallen off the beaten path. You remind them of where they uh, fall short and where they are wrong. Well, we all fall short of the glory of God. But the difference in the common denominator is our common de denominator is Jesus Christ, who is our righteousness. Their common denominator is sin and darkness. Ergo, the twain shall never meet, as they say. Okay, so let's move on. Finish reading. Five. Who shall give account to him that is ready to judge the quick and the dead? For this cause was the gospel preached also to them that are dead that they might be judged according to men in the flesh, but who live according to God in the spirit. So when you and I live in the spirit, according to God in the spirit, people who live according to the flesh are repelled, they're repulsed by us. They're turned off to us. We're just a little too extreme. You know what I mean? All right. Uh, let's see. Seven, but the end of all things is at hand. Be therefore sober and watch unto prayer. The end of all things is at hand. All right, eight. And above all things, have fervent charity among yourselves, for charity shall cover the multitude of sin. Use hospitality one to another without grudging. Okay, so I'm going to stop there for a minute and see how God leads. The thing you have to understand is, okay, Lord, I will continue reading. <clears throat> Nine, use hospitality one to another without grudging. As every man hath received the gift, even so minister the same one to another. As good stewards of the manifold grace of God, if any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. If any man minister, let him do it as of the ability which God giveth that God in all things may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom be praised in dominion forever and ever. Check this out. Verse 12, Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you as though some strange thing happened unto you, but rejoice in as much that ye are partakers of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory shall be revealed, Ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. If ye be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are ye, for the spirit of glory and of God resteth on you. In their part, he is evil spoken of, but on your part, he is glorified. Let's stop there for a minute. Now, the thing I want to prepare you for moving into these last days as we have already begun to do. You will notice as you see your friends become uh, distant from you, as you see people distancing themselves from your company, from having conversations with you, from giving you calls or receiving calls, there might come times when you feel lonely. 
There might come times when you feel rejected, when it starts to hurt that the very people that were close to your heart have turned their back on you. It can hurt. And sometimes it really hurts deeply. But I'm talking from experience because I went through that myself. But you have to remember, it's all for Christ's sake. And when you are criticized, rejected, kicked to the curb, ostracized because of your commitment to Jesus Christ, glory in that, you guys. Because not only are we to become acquainted with the power of his resurrection, but we are also to partake in the sufferings of Christ. And part of his sufferings include rejection, rejection of who he was, who he stood for. And that's what led to his crucifixion. And to this day, after his resurrection, to this day, when you name Mohammed, when you name uh, 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 what's the other, the, the, the Chinese, Buddha, when you name all these other prophets from days of old, who is the one whose name cannot be named on public TV, whose name is not to be used on a courthouse front page, who is not to be used here, there, or certain TV stations. Jesus is the only one this world recoils from. That says something right there, doesn't it? Doesn't that say something? When you look at the fact that this world has been turned over by God to the authority of darkness, of the devil himself. Everything that pertains to Jesus is diametrically opposed to him. And everything that is diametrically opposed to him is holy and righteous. So if you are in Christ, and you are and you are seeing people rise up against you because of your stand in Jesus Christ. You are to joy in that because that shows you're on the winning side. It may look like you're in the minority, and you may be. And the reason for that is because there are, how does the Bible say? Wide is the way that leads to destruction. But narrow is the way that leads to life everlasting. So that means if you are part of that small number referred to as that remnant, you are in good hands because you're on the winning side. Jesus doesn't need numbers to win. He has already won. He has already won. And unfortunately, the enemy has yet to get the memo. I do believe that the same way God turns people over to reprobate minds, the same way God turns people over to a rebellious, easily deceitful mind, people who are easily deceived, who deceive and are being deceived by the enemy, people who live delusional lives. God has turned them over to a reprobate mind. Guess where that begins? Satan himself. For Satan to honestly believe he can replace God. God had to have put a mindset in him that is totally repulsive to truth. And anything that really represents truth sounds ludicrous to Satan. So Satan continues to strive to supplant and, or, and replace God himself, which will happen in the second half of the tribulation period, when the abomination of desolation takes place, he shows his true colors and he will rise up in the temple and claim himself to be God, thinking that he can actually replace him. Really? Anyway, you have to know who God really is. You have to know where the authority lies. So that no matter what happens in this world, no matter what rises up against you, no matter what oppositions you may face, no matter what lies may be spoken against you, 
you know who's on your side. And if God be for you, who can be against you? Hmm? So understand, no weapon formed against you will prosper. If you're on God's side and God's on your side, baby, that's all you need. You don't need a gun. You don't need a spear. You don't need strategies. I'm talking about worldly strategies. You don't need lies. You don't need to have conniving schemes going for you. You don't need to do anything that lines up with the ways of this world because you have a risen Savior. He's in the world today. And you have to know he is very much alive and well. He has authority over all works of darkness. And if he has authority and he lives in you by the power of the Holy Ghost, you have authority too. So if you are attacked by a human, by an animal, by a demon, Rebuke it in the name of Jesus. Bind it down in the name of Jesus. Take authority. Do you hear me? And understand, be encouraged by it. Understand that if Satan hates you, it's the Jesus in you that he hates. And the Jesus in you will not allow Satan to do you any harm. Mm. There are times when life can come against us. I'm, I'm, I'm going to try to make it short because I know I can be long-winded. There are times when life can come against us. And money can be funny. Change can be strange. You can be in a precarious position where your back is up against the wall. And, they, and you know the old adage, desperate men take desperate measures. But even if you're in a desperate situation, if you remind yourself to be still and know that he is God, he is not just God sitting on the throne. He is God very much in control. And when he hears you cry out, he raises up from that throne and he comes down through the dark clouds, through the lightning, through the storm to your rescue. And he will lift you up out of many waters. But are you calling on him or are you depending on the schemes, the lies, the conniving uh, uh, strategies and, and tricks coming out of your sleeve that you can pull? Some of you run to the gambling shack when your money gets funny and your change gets strange. Some of you resort to stealing, lying, or deceiving others to get your hands on their money when your back is up against the wall. But see, when you love people, that's why God says love covers a multitude of sin. That goes both ways. Love helps you not be bothered by other people's shortcomings and sins, but Love also stops you from committing sins against your brothers and sisters. Love stops you from being treacherous, deceiving. It stops you from stealing, from conniving. It's, it, it rids you of treachery. And it makes you do right by each other. So if you're not doing right by each other, trust me, baby, the love of God does not dwell in your heart has not been activated in your heart. You're living by your flesh. You're living by your lusts. You're living by your fears. Because fear is what comes from desperation, not faith. Faith will make you stop, make you slow your roll, put the brakes on and say, wait a minute, what would Jesus do? God, what would you have me do? Faith will make you stop in the middle of a crisis. Take a moment and ask God for direction. Ask God for help. Ask God for intervention. Ask God for his wisdom. 
Hmm. Fear will make you resort to any sin possible by any means possible in order to get your needs met, in order to get the deed done, hmm. in order to seal that deal. So no matter what comes against you, you have to remember where you stand and who you are and whose you are. Now, the thing the Lord reminded me of, and I'm going to tell this quick story and then I'm going to close. Years ago, I was working for a home for the deaf, for senior deaf. I was the activities director and I only worked two days a week. And they wanted me to distribute alcohol as a gift to the donors of that facility for Christmas. And I let them know I wouldn't be able to do it. To make a long story very short, the bottom line is when the boss got through realizing that they were not going to be able to twist my arm and make me do this thing, they dismissed me very rudely. And yes, I was afraid, but I still stood my, stood my ground. I can't go against my conscience. So I went home. That Thursday, I went to work. I worked Tuesdays and Thursdays. They did not have the courtesy to tell me, don't come in. They let me waste my gas so they could humiliate me. I came to the job to do my, my work. And they sweetly, with their arm around my shoulder, let me know that they had to let me go. All of a sudden, they didn't have money. So I cried all the way home, praying and crying, because I was more hurt that they would do me like that than anything else. I really honestly thought that was a real family setting, that it was really based on love. And boy, did I find out otherwise. See, once you make a stand for God, the people you thought were all in your corner will turn their back on you and kick you to the curb and throw you under the bus on top of it. And never look back to see how you're doing because they don't care. Not when you stand for Jesus. That's sad. But it's true. So I lost my job that Thursday. Tail tucked between my legs, praying, asking God, take the hurt out. I was hurting y'all. I was hurt more by the way they did it. I knew they meant to hurt me by doing it that way. That hurt right there. I knew I could get a job, but that hurt right there. I loved those people. I thought it was a reciprocal love. I found out it was not. <clears throat> that Friday, <laughs> Friday morning, I get up. <clears throat> the Board of Education gives me a call. We're really in desperate need of teachers' aides, and we, and we found your application. I put that application in about a year and a half ago. Didn't hear anything. They said, would you like to start Monday? <laughs> Are you available? Are you still interested in the position? I said, what time? <laughs> they had me working Monday through Friday, six hours a week. I mean, six hours a day, 30 hours a week. Well, I know that was so that they wouldn't have to pay benefits, but the bottom line is 30 hours a week beat 10 hours a week by a mile. So I was on it, y'all. Like white on rice. See, God had my back because I made a stand for him. He didn't leave me out there in the cold. He had a backup. <laughs> when God in the Bible says he is your rear guard or your rear reward, that boils down to, baby, I got your back. I'm your safety net, not your job. I am. 
So when you make a stand for Jesus, when you live holy for Jesus, when you don't get involved in other people's sin for the sake of Jesus and your witness, no matter how many people kick you to the curb, throw you under the bus, reject you, whatever, you will know in whom you serve that you are never alone, baby, and you always have reinforcements and backup because God takes care of his own. Even if the world throws you to the wolves, baby, God will not allow one wolf to bite you. Just know that you're always in a safety zone with Jesus. So don't be afraid to stand up to him. Don't be afraid of losing a friend. Don't be afraid of losing a boyfriend or a girlfriend because you won't lay down with them for the name of Jesus. Don't be afraid of somebody being mad at you. They will get over it. Trust me. Move on. As Marlene says, keep it moving for Christ, because only what you do for Christ will last. Amen? Amen.